Hi, today we're going to be creating this, a rocket exhaust flame. To start off, just delete the standard cube and then press Shift A to insert a UV sphere. We're going to rotate this by pressing R on the keyboard, then Y to lock it on the Y axis, and then holding Ctrl to snap it to 90 degrees. I will press 1 on the numpad to enter the front orthographic view. And uh, then I'm going to try to select one half of the sphere, which is not possible unless I check the X-ray mode. So going back to front orthographic view by pressing numpad 1, I'm going to select the right side of the sphere. It doesn't matter which side you use. I will press X on the keyboard and delete the vertices. Now I'm going to press A and then S to start scaling all the others. And then press X to lock it across the X axis while I press Ctrl to snap it to the grid. I'm going to scale it to a size of 8, as you can see in the top left corner. And then I press G, and I'm going to press X again to scale it along the X axis and try to center it. So here I have a basic mesh which we're going to modify. So exit the uh, edit mode by pressing Tab on the keyboard. Then let's go to Modifiers and Add Modifier. Then we're going to add a Wave Modifier on the bottom here. So if I press space for play, you can see that our mesh is starting to move. But we're going to have it moving a specific way. So let's uncheck the Y axis on motion. And then let's enter some values. On the speed, we're going to enter 0 0.41. And on the width, we're going to enter 0.13. And on the height, we're going to enter minus 10 meters and on the narrowness we're going to enter 4.8 meters so now we have the basic values down and you can see the mesh is starting to act really weird and we don't want the back here to be squirreling around so we're going to lock the back down to do that enter edit mode and what we're going to do is add them to a vertex group to separate them from the others so as you can see here in the wave modifier, have the ability to choose a vertex group that the modifier should be able to modify. So let's uh, create a new group and select the ones that we want to shake and be used by the wave modifier and assign them to that group. Now go back to the modifier and assign that group in the vertex group. And now we can see those that were left out on the front there, they are not active. They so I'm going to quickly hop back in edit mode and by pressing tab, I'm going to select this circle here and press G twice and move it a bit backwards. So now let's add a material to this object. So select the object in object mode and go to materials and press new. Now we're going to create an emission shader for it and we, because we want this to glow, obviously. It's flames. So let's uh, head over to the shading tab. This is where we're going to do most of our work and try our best to make it look good. So what we're going to do first is add a couple of extra things here. As you can see, here's the emission shader that we added. Uh, we can change the color and the strength of the material or the strength of the emission. But first off, let's uh, head up to the render tab and enable bloom so we can see the glow. Now back to shader. Let's press Shift A to add and then search up a mix shader by typing in a search field. Then drag and drop here a bit. And now we have the emission shader going through a mix shader. That's because we're going to mix it with something. We're going to mix, mix it with a transparent shader. Now we have a factor here between them. And if you try to change that, you can see that it should really blend between those two, but it doesn't really work. So let's head over to the materials tab again for the object and change the blend mode in settings to alpha blend. Now it will work with the EV renderer. So now when we play around with the f factorization here, you can see that it smoothly blends between them. But before we go any further, let's change the background color in the world tab here to black and enable live preview of the render. Really nice. So let's go back down to the node editor here. We're going to press Shift A and we're going to add a new node. Um, this is a color ramp. 
then the color ramp will be controlling the factor between the transparent mode and the emission shader and as you can see if I drag the sliders here it does have an effect on the factor but it's not satisfactory we want to add some texture to this flame so what we're gonna do is add something else so let's press shift A again and we're gonna search up um, a texture here and it's called Voronoi Voronoi and we're gonna drag the color to the factor of the color ramp and as you now can see the flame has an interesting texture there's something happening and it looks like there's a there's some power going on here but if you look to the upper left you can see my fps is just 24 so let's change that go to the output and change the frame rate to 60. now the whole thing would look a lot more nicer and much more powerful as well because the speed of the wave modifier can catch up with the frame rates and talking about modifiers we're going to ba go back to the modifier tab for this object we're going to add uh, decimate modifier this is very good if you're making low poly stuff i'm going to have low poly rocket ship or something you can make this look uh, really good for uh, your low poly models and projects and one of the best ways to learn blender is to play around with modifiers and figure out what they do but i'm gonna add another modifier let's add a subdivision modifier so as you can see now we can make the flame look a bit more smoother and a bit more nice we can't add too much here it's gonna be too hard for it to catch up so you can change the characteristics of this rocket flame as you want and as you wish and suit it to your purpose and your project but for this we're just gonna keep the ratio up to the top and we're gonna just keep the uh, turn off the subdivision modifier for now so what we're going to do next is that we're going to copy this by pressing shift d on the keyboard now we have a copy we're going to scale it on the x-axis so press s and then x and scale it to be a bit shorter then press s again and just scale it normally and scale it just a tiny bit inside the bigger flame now you can see that if you change the color of the flame now by changing the emission you can see that both are changing and as we want the only the inner flame to change we're going to go to its material tab and we're going to press this user button display number of users this is how many are using this texture by pressing this one you're making a clone that's just for that object so now if you change the color it will change independently of the other color so the next step would be to add a nozzle and head back to the layout tab and go to the center of the scene here and add a new uv sphere by pressing shift a then rotate it on the y-axis by pressing r then y then rotate now we're going to do the same as we did before we're going to delete one half of the uh, sphere by pressing tab on the keyboard we're going to enter edit mode there and we're going to select the one half and x and then vertices gone so now we have a sphere which is empty on the inside it doesn't look as good so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch it out a bit first we're gonna select it in edit object mode then we're gonna press s on the keyboard and press x to scale it along the x-axis so just scale it up a bit and make it nice and we're going to add a solidify modifier and we're going to change the thickness up to about 04 and after that we're going to scale it up a bit more so that it aligns with the edge of the exhaust and there we go now you can see all the edges on the sphere and we're going to change that so we're going to head over to edit mode select all and we're going to go to face and then press shade smooth now when we head back you can see that the cone is a bit more smoother so yeah that's that now next thing is just add a light and that light if you haven't touched anything will be added to the center um, 
So let's change up the intensity of the light to about 1500 watts and change the color. I'm turning off shadows here, but that's up to you. You know, that's your preference. But what you really should do is just turn off the shadow mode on each individual flame. So now we have a light and that makes an effect. We can turn it off and on here and see that it makes things look a bit hotter. But we're not done yet. We're gonna make things uh, more hot and we're gonna make the bell housing look hot. So let's head over to shading. First gonna just add a new material here and just go to shading here. Now the first material that we added has a lot of options. Uh, this is where we're gonna add your texture and make it look really good. Just shift A and add an image texture. And here you can change the metallic properties, the specular, the roughness, and make it really nice. Just play around with it and make it how you want it. But we're going to focus on making this look hot. So first off, we're going to add an emission shader. Now, this is the same as we used on the flame. So make things glow and makes a bloom effect. Now, to mix these two, just search for mix shader and let's add the emission to that as well now you can see we increase the intensity a bit and change the color to something that looks like glowing metal and that's about right maybe well i don't know what kind of alloy this is <laughs> so anyway uh let's make some space here and you can see the factor changing between the normal texture and the emission so let's add a color ramp again the color ramps are awesome and we're going to make this change the factor between these two and this is going to control where the glow is going and to control that we're going to be adding a texture coordinate so just shift a search for texture coordinate and then we're going to add a mapping tool uh, or a mapping you just name mapping shift a mapping add that then drag the objects to the vector and the vector to the factor. So now it's essentially the texture coordinate and the mapping and the color ramp controlling where this glow should be. And as you can see, it doesn't align properly. Uh, so let's just, just play around with the C axis on the rotation here and try to find a good alignment. So I guess it's around 45 on this axis and that seems about right. And the next rotation vector uh, I think it's the y-axis and let's try to put it at 55 I guess yeah that seems pretty straight to me yeah good so now we're gonna play around a bit with the settings in the mapping uh, coordinates there and the color ramp to get it this to look good this may be different from object to object if you used your own uh, model for the um, engine you are gonna have to play around to get things to match and um, that's what I'm gonna do now I'm just gonna play around a bit and see if I can find a good place to put this I'm guessing that I need to play around with the c-axis a bit and the color ramp and yeah find the best <laughs> and I can see that I forgot to put this on ease this will smooth out the transition is not just black and white this will actually make it a, a more of a gradient between the texture and the heat uh, that we're making so yeah let's crush this up a bit and yeah I think that's look yeah looks good so I'm gonna increase the intensity a bit on the emission shader I think and I'm gonna say that we're done well at least on the bell housing that is so for the next trick we're gonna make the flame a bit more interesting this is really boring exhaust flame so we're gonna have some wave pattern to it or like as you can see on the rocket videos you can see the shockwave pattern especially on the latest SpaceX Raptor engine uh, I'm gonna try to be copying that on my spare time and if I can copy that Raptor engine look I will be posting a tutorial about it so I'm experimenting with that right now so what you can see I did here was shift D and just copy another one and I'm gonna rotate it around on the uh, I'm gonna rotate it around on the y-axis and I'm gonna hold control to snap it 
and there you go and just move it up a bit move it back on the x-axis g and x and as you can see in the the vertices in the front there are, are still locked so I'm gonna unlock these and make the V modifier control the entire thing so I'm just gonna delete the vertex group and as you can see the entire thing is now moving so scale it press SX and scale it and make it a bit of a, a blob shaped and I'm gonna place this inside somewhere to make the flame a bit more interesting maybe there's a shock wave pattern here yeah looks kind of cool experiment with it <laughs> um, you can create with this uh, method you can create anything I'm gonna try to be creating the he Raptor engine it's gonna be hard but but in the EV rendering uh, engine you don't have object motion blur you have camera motion blur when the camera is moving but you don't have object motion blur so I can't get the tail to look really good uh, you can do that in the cycles render, no problem. Uh, but I like to do things in EV. I like to, I, I really like that because the workflow is really fast and responsive, uh, which is what I like. I don't have a beefy computer, so <laughs> I really enjoy using EV. But that's it for today. So thank you for watching. Have a pleasant day and enjoy your life, please and thank you. <laughs>